present time. He was just about to go out of the store and take a look at the motorcycle when a person entered the store. It was a lady in her early twenties. Hello, I need some groceries. She said as soon as she saw Jack behind the counter. Since he was having a customer, then he would surely make sure to operate the store first before checking out the bike. Jack sold to the lady a few groceries. Just like the man that had just left, she asked for the vegetables. Of course, Jack replied that they would be available the following day. After all, after getting the system, he would make sure that the customers get satisfied with his services. The total this time was $175. The lady paid via cash. She had wanted the vegetables the most but since they weren't available, she bought some spices and other small things. As soon as he kept the money inside the drawer of the counter, the system's robotic voice echoed followed by the vibration of his phone. You've earned $175. Multiplier applied. You've received $17,500. He took out his phone and just as he had expected, the vibration was caused by the message from the bank. Flyer's bank account received $17,325. Current balance is $296,361. Jack could finally see that the system wasn't going to be cheated. After all, he was supposed to receive $17,500. But since he had received $175, then this amount was deducted from the total and the rest was sent into his bank account. Jack then thought to himself, it seems that I can get back all the money that I spent as well as make a profit on my first day. This is going to be amazing. Just like that, Jack forgot about the motorcycle that he had just received as a reward from the system. The customers were coming into the store one after the other and the number was increasing as time went on. Most of them asked for vegetables but since there were no vegetables, they had no choice but to try the other stores. What's more, there were some of them that began complaining and left without purchasing anything. If you don't have vegetables, then why did you open the store? Hey, I just wasted a lot of time to get here. Now you're telling me that there are no vegetables? Hey, if you don't want to run the store, just close it down. But since Jack was in good mood from the amount of money that was entering his account, he definitely ignored the angered voices of the customers. Of course, he would bring the vegetables on the following day. He knew that no matter how much he listened to them, there was no way that he was going to change the situation. After all, there were no vegetables in the store and nothing could change that for the time being. That would change the following day. After all, most of the people that came to the store mostly wanted vegetables. It was around 9.30 p.m. that Jack closed the store. The customers had stopped coming to the store at around 9.10 p.m. The earnings today could be said to be the most that he had gotten in his life. He had earned a total of $8,345. This was added to the fact that the vegetables were not there or else, he would have earned a lot more. Although this could be seen as much of one considered that the stock had to be maintained, the profit from this was only around $1,050. But, this was good too as if he multiplied by 30, this would be at least $30,000 a month. The monthly rent was only $7,000. So, he could be said to be earning about $23,000 per month. But, that was on a normal situation. With the system, Jack's income of the day wasn't that small. He took his phone and checked the balance in his account. Flyers Bank Savings Account Balance is $1,124,011. His bank account already had over $1 million. On this day, the customers had mostly paid in cash. The total cash amount that he was having was $7,025. This was the amount that was given to him after the purchases. Jack immediately made a decision. All the cash that he would be receiving was the one that he would be spending on himself. As for the ones that came into his account, he would use all of that in his business. But, in the future, if there would be more money, he surely would spend on himself. He was already a millionaire but he knew that this wasn't enough. If the Alfonso family wanted to cause him problems, there was no way that he could resist. He would be forced to go to another city again. He took out the key to the motorcycle as he closed the store. The streets were slightly lit up by streetlights. There were some areas that were dark as the streetlights weren't working there. But since he was closer to the richer area, the area in front of his store was fully lit. As soon as he got out, he found that in the small parking space of the store, there was a modern bike parked there. There were some people that were looking at it in admiration. They kept talking about it. Do you know what kind of bike this is? No, do you? Of course I do. 
This is a Suzuki GSX R1000 Phantom Special Edition. It's worth at least $170,000. What? That expensive? Of course it is. This bike has a speed of 173 miles per hour. It's really cool. By the way, how do you know about all of that? Humph, I've been researching on the bikes recently. I will be buying one in the near future. Wow, it seems that you're rich. The Suzuki GSX R1000 Phantom Special Edition was painted black. It could merge well with the dark as long as the headlights were not switched on. Jack got to the small crowd and took out the key. He then pushed open the reluctant crowd before sitting on the bike. He could feel that it was kind of comfortable sitting on it. After ignition, he sped away from the store as the crowd of youngsters made way. Do you know that person? I think he's the one that was in the store. So, he's the new owner of the store? Maybe. After all, with such a bike, how can he be a small-time employee? The youngsters discussed for some time before they dispersed. On the other hand, Jack enjoyed the thrill of riding the bike. This wasn't his first time riding one as he knew how to drive even cars. This was something that all members of Alfonso family had to know. So, although he wasn't liked there, he was still able to learn most of the things like his other siblings. With the headlights on, all the areas that were dark were lit up. Thus, in just a few minutes, Jack had arrived at his apartment. He wanted to go for a few more rounds but felt that things won't work out well as at nighttime. Furthermore, Yellow Street wasn't somewhere safe as there were some gangsters loitering around the street at such a time. He felt that he would have to get an assistant to help him with the store now that his source of income was assured. This apartment had a small parking space. Jack went forward and packed his bike. There were two Toyota Corolla cars that were packed there. Of course, they were old ones. But still, they were better than those that had to walk on foot while going to work. After locking the bike, he took the keys and the helmet, which was on the bike but he didn't wear, and headed back to his room. After a simple meal, he laid down on his bed and began thinking about what he was going to do the following day. First off, he would have to purchase the store. He found that the store was in a good place and he didn't lack customers. If not for the lack of vegetables in the store, then he was sure that he would have earned even more. After all, he had earned more than twice the amount that he had been saving for six years. The next thing was to find the source of stock. He would have to find a reliable source where he could get things to sell there in the store. For that, he would have to take a few trips around the city to find someone that he could come to an agreement with so that they can supply him with goods. Then, the assistant for the store. No, he would have to hand over the store to another person while he himself would deal with expanding the business or opening other businesses. There were some companies that had people that could do the job. These small companies were the ones that could offer the citizens the help in looking for jobs at a small monthly interest from their income. They were reliable. So, he wasn't going to get worried that the person that he would employ would run away with money. After all, all of their details were recorded in the company. Now, to expand the business, he would need to do more than just getting a store. If he wants to get a better source of income, he would have to go to a better street. But of course, he wouldn't close down the store here in Yellow Street. He might as well open branches for the store. After thinking it through, he found that it would be good if he could just open branches for Alfix grocery store in the city. This way, he could at least have something to hold on to first. Then, after the stores are opened, he could place the headquarters in the center of the city. Then, from there, if things went well, he would influence other cities too. With the billion-dollar system, he wasn't worried about money. The only thing that he would have you deal with would be getting connections and suppliers. As long as he was assured of the supply, he wouldn't have to worry about anything. Buzz. At this time, his phone vibrated. He took it and looked at it. It was a message from the butler of Alfonso family. Jack is no longer a member of Alfonso family. But since he has the bloodline of the Alfonsos, he would be given a compensation of $500,000. It is expected that Jack would not dare to use the Alfonso family's influence in any way or he would be punished. Flyer's bank account received $500,000. Current balance is $1,624,011. Not long after that. You've earned $500,000. Multiplier applied. You've received $50 million. Flyer's bank account received $50 million. Current balance is $51,624,011. Oh, that works too? Jack asked out loud. Jack didn't know what to say about the system. 
The money that Alfonso family had given him was so that he could fend for himself without using the name Alfonso. But here, the system took it as an income. So, he had to know what's income and what's not. System, why is the compensation from the family being counted as income? It seems that you don't know the definition of income. I'll define it for you. Income is anything that comes in. If you earn money from stealing or robbing, that's income. If you go around being beaten up before being paid, that's income. In other words, as long as you do something and you get something else in return, that will be counted as income. Of course, the system limits what income will be multiplied. If you steal from a person, that will not be multiplied. If you receive bribes, that will not be multiplied. You have just received $500,000 from your family. That's as the income from defecting from Alfonso family. Since it's not counted as illegal as nobody is going to suffer, it has been multiplied. Jack was led in silence for a long period of time by the lengthy system explanation. He was trying to think of other sources of income that could be counted as legal by the system. Why is a bribe considered illegal? It doesn't hurt a person, does it? After thinking for a moment, he asked. Bribes are going to hurt a person. After all, if a person bribes you, it's either that, the person has done a mistake and doesn't want to be punished or, he's incompetent and is trying to buy his way in. For the first one. If he did a mistake like hitting another person, that is considered hurting someone. Hey, that's too direct. I mean, there are other things you know. Jack couldn't help but complain at the system's deduction of a mistake. Okay, he might have accidentally hit another person with a car, that's hurting others. He might have accidentally poured hot tea on another person's face thus causing this person to be admitted in the hospital. This is considered hurting a person. You're helpless, Jack sighed. For the second one, if a person is incompetent and buys his way into a job, then he's definitely causing the competent but unemployed fellows out there to continue being unemployed. He seriously didn't know what to say about the system now. This system seriously had some issues. It definitely needed service. Leaving that aside, Jack focused in the issue of him no longer being a member of Alfonso family. Although he hadn't expected it, he wasn't surprised at all. After all, what was making him stay in the family mansion was his mother Anne. Now that she was dead for four years and Jack was an adult now, they could disown him. Although it was the butler that had sent the message, Jack knew that this was his father's decision. After all, he was the head of the family and the CEO of Fonso Group. He didn't care that much about being removed as a member of the family. It wasn't like he was depending on the family name to do anything anyway. Furthermore, he has a system now and he didn't think that there would be any problem. After all, the system would multiply his income by a hundred but his losses would remain the same. In order to make sure that he was no longer counted as a member of Alfonso family in the future, he saved the message that he had received in the email. If they saw him succeeding in the future and come trying to pull him back into the family, he would show the message to them. He had saved who the sender was plus the contact number. After that, Jack looked at his account balance. Now that he was having 50 million, it wasn't bad if he could get a good villa or maybe a mansion to stay in. With the way that the system was rewarding him, who knew if tomorrow he would be rewarded by a helicopter or maybe some sport cars? If so, with the small parking space of the apartment, there was nowhere that he was going to pack them. Furthermore, this was a backward place. So, if an expensive vehicle appeared here, it was obvious that there would be people surrounding it and it won't be difficult for several livestream celebrities to claim that the cars belong to their boyfriend. So, all of that would have to wait for the following. Jack had a nice sleep and only woke up at 7 in the morning. He went to the shared bathroom of the apartment and took a shower before changing into a blue jeans and a yellow t-shirt. He wore casually, after all, he wasn't going to an office. He got out of the room and headed downstairs with the key and helmet. Just like the previous day, there were several people that were curiously eyeing his bike. After all, it looked out of place. You know, this is my bike. I bought it yesterday. Really? Then, can you give me so that I can go for a ride? What do you mean? Do you know how much it cost me to buy this bike? It was $80,000. If I give you and you get an accident with it, how are you going to repair it? Uh. Hey handsome, why don't we go for a ride together on your bike? Cough. Not now, I still have to do something else. Maybe later. Jack was left speechless after hearing the conversation. As he pushed through the crowd, he found a guy who seemed to be in his mid-twenties leaning on his bike. See, this was what I was talking about. 
This was just a bike that cost about $170,000. Yet here, there was someone already claiming to own it. He even said that it cost only $80,000? What a shameless guy! Furthermore, he even found an excuse to evade riding the bike. But if you have somewhere to go, then why are you still leaning on the bike instead of hurrying on your way? Jack sighed before he approached the bike. As soon as the young man saw Jack approaching, he frowned and waved his hand impatiently, Hey buddy, you might not have heard but I own this bike. And, am about to go somewhere and am not lending it to anyone. Jack was left speechless once again. Who the hell said that he wanted to borrow the bike? That's my bike, alright? He simply shook his head as he took out the key and shook it in front of the guy's eyes. He then patted the helmet that he was holding in his left hand. Oh, you own your own bike? I am not going for racing at all. I've got somewhere to go. The guy raised his brows slightly before waving Jack off. Is this person a retard? He wondered to himself. Ahem, I mean I own the bike. Jack coughed slightly and pointed at the bike that the man was leaning on. The guy looked behind him before he looked at Jack with a face that was full of question marks. I don't see any bike behind me. Jack's twitched as he heard this. He sighed and said, I mean, I own the bike that you're leaning on. As he said this, he shook the key in front of the guy once again. The guy frowned for a moment before his face revealed as if he had just gotten an epiphany. He coughed embarrassedly and moved to the side. Jack just shook his head, got on the bike, put on his helmet before he accelerated away from the apartment area. It was only after he left that the crowd reacted. Wait a second, didn't that guy just now claim that the bike was his? Yeah right. Where's this guy? He shamelessly claimed that he had bought it yesterday. He was so smug. It turns out that it wasn't even his. So, that's why he was just leaning there and didn't dare to give the bike to someone for a ride. I knew it. I didn't see a key on him. Shameless, you're also bragging. Wait a second, where's that guy? Eh, he was here a second ago. I swear I saw him standing next to him and I didn't see him leave. That guy sure is fast. The crowd was left speechless once again. It turned out that as they were still understanding the situation, the guy had already fled. What was surprising was that in the crowd of about 20 people, nobody saw him getting away. Jack knew nothing of this but he was still reminding himself that he had to get a house on this very day. Otherwise, it won't be long before a person says that she was his girlfriend. Speaking of a girlfriend, he wondered what was contained in the envelope that his mother had left him. Still, he put that thought aside as he headed towards the company that had people that were looking for employment. With the bike's speed, he got there in slightly over 30 minutes. It was located in another street that could be said to be better than Yellow Street. Not only was it cleaner, but the buildings here were also better. This was the Anson Street. It could be said to be where people came to look for job. Or it could be said that this was the headquarter for those non-employed from several streets that were like Yellow Street. He arrived in front of Dan's brokers. After parking his bike, he headed straight for the entrance of the building. It was bigger than the shop's agency back in Yellow Street. As he entered, he found that inside was crowded. Although it was crowded, he could see that it was organized well. After all, although the ground floor was an open space, there were plaques hanging in several areas showing the different divisions of professions. There were sales department where he wanted to go to, cleaning department, security department, delivery department and so on. As soon as they saw him entering, those that were in charge of several departments ran to him. Hello sir, what department would you like to visit? One of them who was a beauty asked with a charming smile. Jack was somehow startled when he saw them rushing towards him but calmed down after hearing the question. I mainly want the sales department but I could use the cleaning and delivery department as well. He said after a moment contemplation. 